SELFSI, Spoken Easy Language for Social Inclusion. First off, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for the warm reception that we got arriving here. And thank you, thank you very much for the lovely organization to our partners, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, one of the partners that are contributing to the CELSI project. And I'm the one to be introducing you to the project today. And I, then I will give the floor to colleagues who will explain where are we at the moment and where do we proceed with our activities. Why do we need this project? Speak to be understood is a very nice title to this event because at any time in any country around, I will now speak, uh, I, I now do not, uh, I won't cite any studies and so on, but mostly at any country at any time, around 20 to 25% of people have trouble with reading language. Like they need some sort of adaptations or adjustments to understand the texts in standard language. But what happens in spoken language? Where do where we where are we here? Uh, how do people understand each other? And for the professionals who are working in different environments with people directly, how to speak in a way people can understand as well. When we were doing some poking around, some researching around what's been done in this area, there's been a little pieces here and there. We have great prof uh, practitioners here with us. You will later hear a keynote from Ulla Bowman, but there isn't so much research. So we said, let's join the practitioners and the researchers together and let's see where we stand. For whom is our project meant? We are in the co-financing of Erasmus project. And Erasmus Plus is a program that is aimed towards educators. And we are now in the field of adult education. So first off, we said adult educators are, they need some guidelines to work with, to educate people in those uh, lifelong uh, programs with all these activities. And the Europe is moving more and more towards, at least officially, uh, to this aspect of inclusivity. And now is the time to work on uh, initiatives like this. So we have people who are teaching other people. And probably many of you here today are teachers, I presume. I will ask uh, Gunta and Irina later, or we will chat in the break. Then we have... Uh, then we have people who work in broadcasting. Uh, Easy Latvian radio was mentioned. So how can we, what we can rely on? Do we have any tips? Do we have any guidelines on how to provide the news for people so they will be really easy to understand? And also we have all different uh, audiovisual um, uh, or audiovisual materials nowadays. And there also um, spoken language is very important. And also we have some other settings where professionals really could use guidelines like this, such in, for example, therapeutic settings, but most importantly, people need easy language. And as already mentioned, a lot of people uh, need an easy language uh, more than we sometimes think. This is now looks very hectic. I intentionally made it hard to read, uh, but I will explain everything. So our projects have different phases. I won't bother you with work package one, which is, uh, which is project coordination and management and all this administration and finances we have to deal with. Um, I will introduce you first to work package two. This is something that it's already done. It was finished sometime in April, May, and we did a research. Perhaps you were a part of that research. We were asking professionals and a lot of end users, what are their strategies for communication? 
like for two-way communication or even one-way communication when in those learning settings and similar settings. And we got a lot of responses. We were hopeful for 100 responses and so, but we got close colleagues from University of Trieste that led uh, this work package. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but around 500, almost 500 answers from 15 countries. So people are really interested in this. They wanted to provide their input. And then, of course, we can go back to work package one and say, yes, we then had challenges on how to uh, on how to analyze all this data, but we pushed through. And then we went into work package three, which is the main topic of the today's event, because we will introduce to you what we learned from this research. We did not only just uh, make questionnaires and send them around and gather this data, but we also, uh, of course, uh, searched around literature. We checked what research is out there. We made some interviews. So we tried to gather as many as many data as possible, as much data as possible, in order to make uh, like really useful guidelines that would work for the people, not just to write something down and say, aha, now the project did this. We presented this the research data in Trieste in April of this year. Now we are here in lovely Riga. And in the May, we will be moving to Sweden. And in the Sweden, we will present the next stage of our projects because, because after leaving Riga here today, after testing these guidelines that we now set in work package three based on our research, we will test them. We will test those guidelines with um, end users and educators. And then in Sweden, we will present what the results of the testing were. Do those guidelines that we chose to be tested really work? How did we go about that in different countries? And what did we learn from it? And then, um, this is not a long project, sadly. We just want to set some guidelines that can keep us going for further research, for further uh, collaboration. Then we are finishing next year in October in Ljubljana, where we'll, we will present a tool will be an online guidelines which shows people to go and click on example how to uh, how to make an understandable audio book and then we will have I already mentioned this report on the research that we did in work package two. It's already available on our website. It's celsi.eu and you can find uh, this very long, Elisa and uh, Pierre, how long of report is it? I, I forgot already, but it's around 400 pages. <laughs> it, yes, it's plain language, which is not as, yeah, it's plain language, which is not as, easy as easy read, but we also met, uh, made easy to read version in English and then translated it to the partner's languages. So um, uh, if you're interested in this data, if you need any further information on this, please check it out on our website. Now we are at the work package three. Laura will later present what we learned, what we combined together, and what will now go into the testing phase. Then after Riga, as already said, we are choosing which guidelines to test because probably some guidelines were already tested at some point with someone and we will choose the ones that are really interesting to us because we learned interesting data from the end users and from the practitioners and we are curious how does this work in practice and we want to check it out by ourselves. I never mentioned who is the part of this project? I should have started with this, but I didn't. So I'm now moving to this. Five countries are involved in the project. Italy, Sweden, Latvia, Lithuania, and Slovenia. And we are different partners. As you can imagine, we need researchers and practical point of view for this project. So two universities, 
three NGOs and one national broadcaster are a part of this project. And we also have many, many associated partners who are uh, also really in, interested in invested in this. And if you or your organization would like to be a part of this project as an associated partner to get a newsletter, to uh, contribute in some way, you are welcome to do so. We also have advisory group of professionals. Those are people who are um, experts in the topic. I already mentioned Ulla Boman. She's one of those experts and she's here with us today, but she will introduce herself later. <laughs> and we also have cooperation groups. These are groups of uh, end users of easy language from three different countries. And we have separate groups because there is a language barrier uh, and we have them in national languages. So wherever these three NGOs come from, there we have those cooperation groups and we can have meetings with them whenever we, we need them, whenever we want to schedule it. They will now be going through our um, easy language reports on work package too. So we are working closely together with the people who are the target group of this easy spoken language. Um, not so, yes, target group, but also beneficiaries, the end beneficiaries of this. And with this, I will leave you to enjoy the CLC day. I'm very much looking forward to the great program. CLC, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Universita degli Studi di Trieste, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatio Scaupimo Irsklaidos Centras. Funded by the European Union.